In this video I'm going to be creating a conical bowl from a slab. I have a pattern here that I have already made and uh, I have several of these that I have um, cut and they are in my classroom for my students to use. You can see the little reference lines depending on how big you want to make your bowl or how narrow. Um, if you wanted to make something uh, say more like a skinny cup, you know, you can cut off both ends, but it gives you an idea of um, how you can really, that could be like a nice cup form, of, um, it, it gives you an idea of different sizes. When I roll a slab, I always try to roll it from the middle going toward the outside rather than from the outside coming in because uh, if you do the ends can wrap around. Now for this I'm going to be creating a conical bowl and I need to have my slab large enough that this will fit this pattern. Okay, I can fit the pattern, now I just have to get it down to the level of the sticks that I would want it to be. Hmm. Alright, I'm now down to the level of my uh, slab sticks, so I have a quarter inch slab for this. I'm going to trim a little bit of the excess off right now so I don't have so much to deal with when I'm picking up the slab. This sort of stuff I'm going to leave loose, squirt it down, and I shall return it to the scrap bag so I can wedge it for the next time. Alright, now that I have the slab rolled to an even thickness, I can rib it. You can use a small little flexible rib, you can use a long rib. Um, I happen to be using this really nice big rib from Mud Tools. I also love their, their red ribs. I'll clean off my edge there. Ribbing will get rid of your canvas texture, but more importantly, it is compressing the clay particles and it gives you a stronger slab. To give you an idea of where I'm going to be cutting, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of draw this. I can even I'll trim this part away. I'll use that for the base. So I want to texture this portion in here. Now my ceramics uh, two students are working on a project where it is a textured slab set project with a focal point. And um, the idea is you're going to have textures but then you want to have a visual focal point. And again, this is a project for my Ceramics 2 kids. I have a little feather which I made from craft foam, just a basic craft foam. I cut it out. So I'm using that as a texture. And then the other texture that I'm going to use, I'm going to use this as a kind of a background. This little roller. I'm going to try to curve it around here a little bit. I don't anticipate that the texture will match up evenly, but it'll have some texture on there, which is really all I'm trying to get. I wanted to get some texture on this. Okay, so I want to make sure that my edges are thoroughly on the slab, and then I'm going to trim this out. Because I make these patterns out of acetate, they're pretty durable. I use a needle tool and 
I let the needle tool ride up against the edge of the acetate. You can make patterns out of you know paper or anything, but I just do this uh, to give my kids a faster way to make some projects, and then they don't have to worry so much about the uh, cutting of them out of the patterns that is. Okay, so now I have my pieces cut out and I want to lift this out. I, if it ever gets stuck, just use a needle tool to uh, remove the foam. And in order to put this together, I'm going to bevel the ends. And I want to bevel them so if this is angled going outward, this one will angle going inward. So I usually use approximately about a 45 degree angle. So I'll remove that. Now I'm going to score both ends. And add slip really to one end is all that is needed. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to position these bevels together and the purpose of the bevel is it allows it to overlap. Okay, so I have a smaller wear board that I'm working on and where my seam has gone together on the inside, I definitely would like to blend this seam together. Again, it is scored and slipped on the interior of the bevels. I just want to get that blended. Very light touch. Okay, And this is a little bit fragile right now. I kind of stretched a little bit with my fingers. I'll clean that up a little bit later. Um, I would probably just as soon let this set up just a little bit, kind of stiffen. It was fresh clay right off the block and it was very, very soft. Um, but I could go ahead and texture this. So this is going to be my base and I do like to, I'll, I'll let that stick off. I do like to embed this in first before I texture over it because if you texture it and the feathers loose, it does tend to move around. This is the pattern for the conical bottom form. So I'm going to trim that away. Okay. Now, I'm going to be setting the walls on top of this, so I'm going to score. And I'm going to slip. This is temporary. I'm just going to set it on here and not firmly attach it until this is leather hard and I can actually flip it over. I'm going to let this sit up and I'm going to come back. Okay, I allowed my uh, bowl to stiffen up a little bit over the course of a couple hours. Now I'm going to attach the base. I just needed to get it just dry enough so I could actually flip the, the form upside down without it uh, shifting too much. It was a little plastic. Okay, so I have scored both the top edge of the bottom and the bottom edge of the sides. I'm just going to just gently press that on and I'm going to flip that back over again. Now on the interior, I definitely want to make sure this looks totally round and then I want to add a coil on the inside because I need to get that blended in there. Uh, right now if I attempt to blend it I'm going to create an indent so I can blend it a little bit but I definitely need to add a coil to give this some stability in here. Now that my bowl is leather hard, I want to go ahead and clean it. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check 
the edge to see if I need to take anything down. Of course I could use a sure form, but I'm just going to delicately take down some areas with a vegetable peeler. I always try to explain to my students the trick with using a rib and not leaving dents and marks on the inside is when you rib, imagine that you are gently petting like a, a puppy's head or a kitten's head. You would want to go at it at an angle when it's uh, making contact at first with the clay. If you go in at a 90 degree angle, you're going to jab it. So you want it to be at a much more gentle angle. And I do want to just tidy up where the base is meeting the side. Again, I'm not trying to hide the fact that it's a slab. I kind of want that to show, but I am just trying to tidy it. If you have any chunks or rough spots, you want to get those off. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to flip it back over so I can make sure it's totally round. Then I'm going to allow that to dry nice and slowly.